Are you thinking about delaying your old age security, OAS, benefits for a bigger payment? Starting June 2024, OAS benefits are increasing by 25%. In this video, we'll explain how this increase works, what it means for your monthly payments, and whether delaying your claim is a good idea. We'll cover everything you need to know to make an informed decision. First, we'll break down the details of the 25% increase. How much more money can you expect each month? We'll provide clear examples to show you the difference this boost can make. Next, we'll discuss the pros and cons of delaying your OAS benefits. On one hand, waiting can mean higher monthly payments, but on the other hand, it also means going without those payments for a while. We'll help you weigh these factors based on your individual situation. We'll also provide tips to maximize your retirement income. Whether you're already receiving benefits or considering when to start, these strategies can help you make the most of your OAS. Finally, we'll answer some common questions. How does this increase affect other benefits? What are the key dates you need to know? We've got all the information you need in one place. Claim your 25% OAS boost today is delaying OAS with the new 25% increase in June 2024 worth it. As we approach June 2024, a significant change is on the horizon for Canadian retirees and those nearing retirement age. The Old Age Security OAS, program, a cornerstone of Canada's retirement income system, is set to offer a substantial 25% boost for those who choose to delay their benefits. This development has sparked considerable interest and debate among Canadians, raising important questions about retirement planning and financial strategies. The Old Age Security Program is one of the pillars of Canada's retirement income system, providing a monthly pension to eligible seniors aged 65 and older, regardless of their employment history. Unlike the Canada Pension Plan, CPP, which is based on your contributions throughout your working years, OAS is funded through general tax revenues and is considered a basic right for Canadian seniors who meet the residency requirements. To be eligible for OAS, you must be 65 years of age or older, be a Canadian citizen or legal resident at the time your OAS application is approved, and have resided in Canada for at least 10 years since the age of 18 if living in Canada, or 20 years if living outside Canada. The amount of OAS you receive depends on how long you've lived in Canada after the age of 18. To receive the full OAS pension, you must have resided in Canada for at least 40 years after turning 18. If you've lived in Canada for less time, you may still be eligible for a partial pension, calculated at 1-40th of the full pension for each complete year of residency after age 18. It's important to note that OAS benefits are subject to a clawback if your net world income exceeds a certain threshold. For the 2023 tax year, this threshold is set at $86,912. If your income exceeds this amount, your OAS pension will be reduced by 15 cents for every dollar of income above the threshold. Starting in June 2024, seniors who choose to delay receiving their OAS pension can benefit from a 25% increase in their monthly payments. This boost is designed to reward those who defer their OAS and continue working or rely on other sources of income during the early years of their retirement eligibility. The increase is not automatic it's tied to the decision to delay your OAS pension. For each month you delay receiving OAS after age 65, your pension amount increases by 0. 0.6%, capped at a maximum of 60 months, 5 years. If you delay for the full 60 months, until age 70, you'll receive the maximum 36% increase. The new policy raises this maximum increase from 36% to 25%, providing an even greater incentive for seniors to delay their OAS. With this new increase on the horizon, many Canadians are wondering whether delaying their OAS is the right move. There are several advantages to consider. The most obvious benefit is the higher monthly payments you'll receive once you start collecting, providing a more substantial income stream in your later retirement years. These payments are indexed to inflation, so by delaying and receiving a higher base amount, your inflation-adjusted payments in the future will also be higher. If you're still working or have other significant income sources between 65 and 70, delaying OAS can help you avoid or reduce the OAS clawback during those years. It might also allow you to spread your income more evenly over your retirement years, potentially resulting in lower overall lifetime taxes. For those expecting to live well into their ADS or beyond, the higher payments from a delayed OAS can provide additional financial security in later years. However, there are also disadvantages to consider. 
By delaying OAS, you're foregoing income in the short term, which could be problematic if you need the money immediately upon retiring. It takes time to make up for the years of missed payments, and depending on the exact calculations, it might take until your late 70s or early 80s to break even. There's also the uncertainty factor none of us know exactly how long we'll live, and if you delay OAS and pass away earlier than expected, you may receive less in total benefits than if you had started at 65. Delaying OAS could also affect your eligibility for other income-tested benefits, such as the Guaranteed Income Supplement, GIS, if you retire at 65 but delay OAS, you'll need to ensure you have sufficient income from other sources to bridge the gap. The decision to delay OAS is highly personal and depends on various factors. Your current age and health status are crucial considerations. If you're in good health and have a family history of longevity, delaying OAS could be beneficial. However, if you have health concerns or a family history of shorter lifespans, it might be wise to start OAS earlier. Your overall financial picture is also important Do you have other sources of retirement income. Can you afford to delay OAS, or do you need the income immediately upon retiring? How will delaying OAS affect your tax situation? Your retirement lifestyle plan should also factor into your decision. Do you intend to continue working past 65, either full-time or part-time? What are your expected expenses in retirement, and how might they change over time? Do you have any large expenses planned for the early years of retirement? If you're married or in a common-law relationship, you'll need to consider how delaying OAS might affect your partner's benefits and your overall household income. It's also important to think about how delaying OAS might impact your eligibility for other benefits, such as the Guaranteed Income Supplement, GIS, or various provincial programs. Economic factors such as inflation expectations, interest rates, and investment returns should also be taken into account. To make an informed decision, it's helpful to run some numbers and see how delaying OAS might affect your specific situation. As of 2023, the maximum monthly OAS payment for a 65-year-old is $687. 56. Under the current system with a 36% increase for delaying to age 70, this would rise to $935.80 per month. Under the new system with a 25% increase, it would be $1,031.34 per month a difference of $96.26 per month or $1,155.12 per year. A break-even analysis can help determine at what age the total benefits received from delaying OAS would surpass those received from starting at 65. Under the current system, the break-even age is around 83.89 years. With the new 25% increase, this drops to about 80 years. These calculations show that under the new system, the break-even point comes earlier, making delaying OAS potentially more attractive for those who expect to live past age 80. However, it's important to note that these calculations don't account for inflation adjustments, which would further favor delaying OAS. There are several strategies you can consider for maximizing your OAS benefits. Instead of delaying OAS for the full five years, you might consider a gradual deferral strategy, starting to defer for a year or two and reassessing based on your financial situation and health. Your OAS strategy should be coordinated with your Canada Pension Plan, CPP, strategy. For example, you might choose to take CPP early, as early as age 60, and delay OAS, or vice versa. If you're married or in a common-law relationship, Consider income splitting strategies to reduce the overall tax burden on your household and potentially minimize OAS clawbacks. Careful planning of your RRSP slash RRIF withdrawals can help you manage your taxable income, potentially keeping you below the OAS clawback threshold and maximizing your benefits. Making the most of your tax-free savings account, TFSA, is also wise, as income earned in a TFSA doesn't count towards the OAS clawback threshold. For some retirees, Using a portion of their savings to purchase an annuity can provide a guaranteed income stream, potentially allowing them to delay OAS and benefit from the increased payments. The new 25% OAS increase doesn't just affect those who are currently at or near retirement age it has broader implications for retirement planning across all age groups. For near retirees, ages 60-64, it provides an additional option to consider in their retirement income strategy. They may want to reassess their retirement date, review their savings to determine if they can afford to delay OAS, and consult with a financial advisor to optimize their retirement income plan. For mid-career individuals, ages 40-59,
the OAS increase offers an opportunity to adjust long-term retirement plans. They might consider increasing their retirement savings to potentially afford delaying OAS, reviewing their career plans to see if working longer to take advantage of the OAS increase is feasible, and adjusting their retirement income projections to account for potentially higher OAS payments. Even for young adults, under 40, while retirement may seem far off, the OAS increase highlights the importance of early retirement planning. They should start saving early to have more flexibility in retirement, understand the basics of government pension programs and how they fit into overall retirement planning, and consider the potential for future changes to retirement programs and plan accordingly. For current retirees already receiving OAS, the new increase won't directly affect their payments. However, it's worth reviewing their overall financial situation, considering strategies to optimize their current benefits, and staying informed about any future changes to retirement programs. While the 25% OAS increase offers significant benefits for many seniors, it's not without its critics. Some argue that it disproportionately benefits wealthier seniors who can afford to delay their pension, while lower-income seniors who need to start collecting OAS as soon as they're eligible may not be able to take advantage of the increase. The decision to delay OAS was already complex, and this change adds another layer of complexity to retirement planning, potentially leading to suboptimal decisions for seniors who don't have access to professional financial advice.